Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting, and this is my weekly podcast. I'm here today with Andra Asarts from, who is a rep from Barocco, and she will tell you in a minute the other yarns. Um, but hi, Andra. Hi, Nancy. Nice I'm so to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, we've been um, spending the last uh, couple hours. Couple hours. Um, I've been looking at yarn that Andra has brought with her. I'm going to ask Andra a few questions and then we'll show you some yarn. Um, I want to know how long have you been a rep? Do you know this is 30 years? It was May of two, of 1993. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. And yes, and Barocco is my original vendor and I am still with Barocco, yay. And it's still mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, Barocco distributes Lang, you know, yes. and the Wool Addicts line and the Amano yarns that we love. And then I recently picked up the Manos line and also carry Brown Sheep and Sirdar yarns. Great, 30 years. Wow, and you yeah. had a different career before that. Oh, I have a degree in nuclear physics. I worked in nuclear power before. <laughs> um, it's fine, this industry is packed full of former scientists this, and engineers. And we still are scientists and engineers. We're just not practicing. Yeah. Yeah, and your it's region, all math. Yeah, your region that you cover is All New six New England states. So th it's wow. January. So in November and December, I did Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine just to beat the snow. Oh, yes. So now I'm working with the stores in Southern New England because the weather's yeah. kind of nice. And how yeah. many stores? Oh, have? well, it varies. Yeah. In the scarf years, remember those? Yeah. We had closer to 200 stores, yeah. and now we have a little bit over 100, 120, something like that, um, oh, knit shops. Gosh. And they, you know, they come and go and come yeah. and go. Yeah. yeah. And so how many days a week are you on the road? I work eight days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, sure just you like do. you, I'm in my yeah. home office and um, I'm on the, and I'm driving and it's lovely to come visit with you because I can ignore everybody else. The phone is off yeah. and I don't have to answer emails or answer calls and I can just work with you. And I love that because it's like a vacation yeah. in my brain. Well, it's great for us. Yeah, it was, it's um, fun. I said to Fiola this morning, Let's see how much Andra sells me today because she's so good at it. Oh, and, I'm not even uh, sure I totaled it all up. Yeah, but it's a good, it's a good <laughs> it's amount. All, I'm sure other, other places do a lot more. I, I'm your dealer, yeah, right? right. I'm, yeah, I'm your dealer. I'm, I, this is how the yarn gets to the store. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Um, and I just had a thought and I, oh, I was going to say I'm amazed when you put things you put things up on your Ravelry page yes and so your Ravelry page people can get access to that how so my Ravelry name is Rentgen it's the unit measure of x-rays people in science know that it's spelled r-o-e-t G-E-N, that's the German physicist who discovered x-rays. My name was taken when Ravelry started, yeah. so I got a cute name. And all of my projects are up there as well as my designer page, but I'm a stickler. We were talking earlier about using Ravelry as the brilliant tool that it is. So when I cast on a project, I put the information on Ravelry as a new project right away, even though I might not have a picture. So the yarn, the needle sizes, the gauge, any notes that I have and the pattern that I'm using so that when I visit with you and you call me next week and say, what was that you were knitting? I can say it's just on my Ravelry page. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's and I don't remember. Someone will call and say, oh, you made that beautiful sheep camp sweater. What needle size did you okay. use or what was the finished measurement? I can't remember. It's on my Ravelry page. And so I go there instead of having a notebook. I just yeah. use that. And it's powerful. Yeah. And you yeah. have. You're on Facebook and Instagram? And Instagram under okay. my name. Yes, Andra Asars. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, we love it when reps come, although um, my bookkeeper probably doesn't because I spend way more than um, I ever always plan to. Um, so there's some people I just don't have come because... They'll sell me yarns I don't really want, but I don't Andra believe always, in that. Yeah, I want to well, see Nancy again. Well, they show me things that I don't, <laughs> and I, I am not good at saying no. Um, and because, you know, we all love yarn so exactly. much that it's hard not to want everything. Um, exactly. But Andra's very good at steering me to things that she thinks um, my customers will want, yeah. showing me samples, and she knits... How many hours a day do you knit? Do you Not very long, but I knit like the wind. Oh, I knit you? very, very quickly, like I speak quickly and I uh -huh. walk quickly. And so I get a lot done. And so yeah. you'll see that on my Ravelry projects. But don't be intimidated. This is no race. It's about the process. Exactly. And the project I'm knitting now, the Sammy Press Flower Cardi, I'm excited that I don't have a deadline for that one. So I think I'm going right. to savor the knit and enjoy this one. And someone said, oh, so it'll be done in a week. 
on yeah. a number four. <laughs> so yeah, it might take <laughs> a week or two. Do you um, knit continental or are you? Yes, I knit continental uh -huh. and I don't have to look when I'm knitting depending on what's happening. So it's yeah. very fast. But when you have deadlines and just like you, you have and you're motivated, it. you plow through something and get it done because yeah. everybody wants to see it finished. Exactly. 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 Well, I love it because Andra comes with all these samples that she's knit in the yarn. So it makes a big difference to see a whole garment that's knit in a yarn and then you can see all the the ways that um or all the colorways and she comes of course with books and um her can you hand yeah. me that just the, the, catalog. Uh, the catalog it can be overwhelming for yeah. a yarn shop owner especially new store owners yeah, because so there's so much information to uh, digest in a quick right. quick time right so we get a catalog it's like a lookbook you know that has and so you can She'll show me a yarn and then you can see, I'll just go back one or two. You can see patterns for yes. um, that yarn. And then she often has samples um, that she has knit and she has some favorites. One of them is the Patty. Patty, patty tank top I have now for seven, seven patties, eight patties. Oh my gosh. Um, three of which are now discontinued yarns and discontinued colors. It's yeah. patty with an I, P-A-T-T-I. Yeah. The shape of it's perfect and I wear it all summer long. Oh, and you'll good. see me, if, if you run into me in a store I'm, in the summertime, I'm wearing Very patty tight. in any number of yarns. Yeah. So that's, we're going to get a sample. Up yeah, in it's a great tank. I thought I'd show you, I just have two things, two little samples of things that I ordered today. And this is a great, you can't see it very well, but it's a hand paint um, from Vintage Baby, which we sell a lot of. It's an acrylic wool and nylon, but it's, um, it's what they call dry dyed, powder dry, dried. It's dry dyed, spots. Dry so spots. they're not spackling color onto the yarn. They're spackling the powder onto the damp yarn. And so then the dye gets in there. So we get a more spot print or speckled effect yeah. with it. It comes in, uh, Vintage Baby comes in five colors, Vintage Baby hand paint, in five colors, in a beautiful twist. Um, two balls will make up to like a one year old size sweater. And you know something, it might say baby on the wrapper, but it can make a lovely um, ladies sweater right. or cowl or yeah. hat or even mitts. So we bought yeah. all four, five, five colors. colors. We yes. bought all those. And I've got another really interesting yarn that Andra can tell you about. It's Wool Addict's Footprints. And I don't have any of the information. No, on it's here, a so blank. We'll it's to... a blank. So Footprints is new from Wool Addicts. This is a cotton and wool with a little bit of nylon blend. And what they're doing is they're doing the printing, like the sock yarn that we all love that self patterns. But because the cotton and the wool use different dyes, they print once for the wool colors and then once for the cotton colors. So we're getting a very interesting color blend in fingering weight on a number two needle. I have made mitts that are lovely and I have a sock in progress and then I will be dragging it with a strand of mohair and do some swatching with mohair because while it's a fingering weight, if you drag along a lace or a DK mohair, you'll get two different kinds of fabrics and then maybe we make a vest or a poncho or a, or a sweater or a cowl. I have to see what the swatch wants to be. So yeah. I'll make a swatch once I'm once I'm there. I gotta make my sock first. And you, yeah, you make <laughs> lots of swatches. I swatch everything. I believe strongly in swatching so the yarn can tell you what it wants to be and washing that swatch because a lot of times things change once they're wet blocked to see what the yarn has to speak to you and tell you. So when I come to visit with Nancy, I'll bring a new yarn and it'll be swatched already in two or three different needle sizes so that she can see and I can know, can you play fast and loose and do this on a loose gauge or do we have to keep this on a tighter side and how's it going to behave? And then since um, by nature of my business, the swatches are already abused by the time okay. I get yeah. here. So then we see how the you yarn's going to last so that when you knit a garment, you know it's going to last a long time or if it's something that's delicate. Yeah. And one interesting thing that you do is you do eyelet holes for the size needle that yes. you use. So again, when I swatch, if, if I pull a swatch out from three years ago, I don't remember what needle size. So on my first row of stockinette, I do a yarn over and knit two together for every needle indicating. So if there's five holes or six holes, it's a five needle or a six needle. Right. So once I swatch a yarn one time, unless it's a crazy pattern I'm doing, I never have to swatch that again. So I yeah. can pull out a modern cotton that we love that I swatched 10 years ago 
ago, I have a 10 year old swatch and it has the needle sizes on it. So it's all set to go. And how big are the swatches? Oh, I try to do generally 35, 36 stitches. So the swatches are really good sized. And if it's a fat yarn like the Dash, yeah. the swatch is this big because I needed that many to get the 15 holes right. going across on, on it. Right. Yeah, so right. they're, they're good size so that we can really get a feel for the fabric. Something like this isn't really a swatch, but you all know that. Yeah. It, it, as knitters, you all know you need to swatch and you all know they should be big. Right. But we have a hard time sometimes convincing people that swatching is a good thing. Um, but how long does it take you to do a swatch? A swatch? A oh, minutes. just a few minutes. Right. And and here's the thing. So I'm starting the Pressed Flowers cardigan. You're all familiar with the Pressed Flowers right. shawl. So, yeah. There's a cardigan pattern that came out in November. And um, so I'm swatching it in Sammy, that right. beautiful organic cotton. And I hadn't knit a Pressed Flowers since last year. So I jumped into the pattern because the gauge is over the pattern stitch and had to relearn, oh, this is how I look at a slip stitch graph. Oh, this is, I was mixing up my colors. Yeah. So I reacquired acquainted myself with the stitch pattern as I did the swatch. So now that I'm knitting the sweater, I'm all set. I know what I'm doing. I've already messed with this. There's no frustration like, oh, three rows back, I made a mistake. No, I know what I'm doing. So swatch is a really good way to get yourself into it. And yeah. then sometimes you can swatch while you're finishing the previous project. So you're still knitting yeah, on something. Yeah, it's yeah. almost done. Exactly. Do the swatch for the next one so that that's all ready to go when you're ready right. to go. Yeah. Right. Right. Always swatch. But everyone who's met me knows swatch, swatch, swatch. swatch. Do you have a favorite yarn? No. <laughs> wow. No, no one's asked me that in a long time. Um, well, I prefer wool of any yeah. sort. I prefer not machine washable. I prefer hand wash right. wools like the Lannis Light that I'm wearing. And um, But every yarn has a purpose, like time and a place. Right. And so it depends on who the audience is and what it's for. And I'm knitting on all these spring yarns right now because that's, that's what I'm showing. Kind of, yeah. So now it's spring that's in my hands. Right. Yeah. Right. So no, I actually, I don't do not have. have a favorite. Yeah, I would say I don't. I have yeah. a few favorites, things that, you know, really fly off my needles that, you know, I really love to do over and over again. Well, um, yes. But. So what have I, I knit feel. many times over? Yes. So I have knit probably five ultra alpaca sweaters and from Broco's ultra alpaca. Yeah. I just finished another one. And then I have knit six big loves. You have the one big, big love yep, cardigan. Yep. I have six. I have four that <laughs> are in amazing. woolly yarns and I, and they're all different yeah. and different colors. I have four woolly ones and two in cotton. The cotton is yeah, the one that right. you yeah. made yeah. in, in Lang soft cotton. So I'll re-knit on Patty. I have eight, yeah. seven. I have many oh. of those. Yeah. If it, if the sweater fits, then um, use it. And if it's yeah. something that you like. I had a store in Connecticut say to me, you know your problem? I'm like, oh, here it comes. Okay. And she said, your problem is your garments, your sample garments, look too much like ready to wear because I'm making clothes yeah. and not necessarily artwork, not pressed flower. Here's a pressed yes, flower. Please. Pressed flower is artwork. And yeah. I do have a shawl and a hat and a sweater yeah. in progress. That's artwork. But generally my clothes are like what I'm wearing or the yeah. tank tops um, and there's some, or the big love cardigan. Right. They're things that I will wear. They fit into my wardrobe and they're not gonna stop traffic, but I'm wearing a hand knit and I'm comfortable right. in it. And so I keep well, making the, it. The thing is, uh, and there's ready to wear and there's ready to wear. The wonderful thing I find about knitting is that you can make it the color you want. Color and the size. The size, to, you can make it to fit you. And, you know, we, I'm sure you hear this and have heard it forever. People make sweaters and they don't fit. Well, there's a reason and, for that. Yeah. It starts so, with a swatch. It starts with a swatch <laughs> and a tape measure. And a tape measure. measure. And, the, and I have a secret. And I only tell people if they need to know the secret when they're trying on my garments, depending on the size of the garment, I will uh, go from um, a 48 or something uh, on the bottom, a larger size on the bottom, and then decrease down so that in my underarm, i am reached the medium yep. size. So even though when I walk in the door, it looks like I'm wearing a straight sweater, right. I'm not. My sweater is slightly right. A-line because uh -huh. it has the ease around the hip, but nobody needs right. to know that and ready to wear, the things are straight or they're right. very big trapeze. Right. Yeah. And they often aren't can't get them in the colors that you want right. or the length for the short length. people. I know. Yeah, everything's so long yeah. in the stores. <laughs> well, and people, you know, look at patterns and they say, "Oh, well, that's too short. I wouldn't wear that." Mm. Well, that's why you knit because you, you can, can make it longer. Just that. Yeah. I mean, that's the wonderful thing. And you can take, as you have done, you can take something like um, Big Love and make it many times over 
because you like the pattern, like the pattern. you like how it fits mm -hmm. and you can do it in different colors and different right. and sizes. I've made different sizes so yeah. two of them fit me slim and then two of them are really oversized yeah. and two of them are standard uh, the standard size and yeah. then uh, one of them has a three-quarter sleeve because yeah. I ran out of yarn, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I knew that was that coming. Yeah. I knew it was coming because it's top down seamless, so you plan yeah. for that. And and it's all serendipitous, but I'm we're, we're trying to knit things that I will wear all the time and love all the time. Yeah. And then if you see me in a knit shop, it's okay to ask me to try on my sweater. I will take my sweater off. And I, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I always make sure I have a shirt underneath. Yeah. Yes. Speaking yeah. of which, what are you wearing? So I am wearing winter lines. This is my new big love. Of. And um, so I stand up a little bit for you here. So winter lines, here we can see, oversized. This is 20 inches of ease. The pattern called for 30 inches of ease. So just absorb that. I did it 10 inches smaller than they mm -hmm. called for. This is made in Lana's Light. It's um, we carry. Yes, it's five balls because of the size. It's a top-down seamless, very simple garment. All of the work is on that shoulder. Can you see the increasing? And you increase out to the width you want, and then you stop increasing and just knit down, leaving an armhole. That's all that it is. Yeah. It's very simple. It's quite warm. And I said that this is my next big love because I envision myself making many, many of these. Yeah. But again, I will adjust the width of it by adjusting here. So if I make it in cotton, I won't make it 20 inches of ease. Maybe I'll do 10. Yeah. yeah. So winter and lines. Can you fit a sweater uh, jacket over that? Uh, it's difficult. Yeah, my puffer, my big long puffer. I, I took this to Iceland with me and I did wear it, but it was hard to get my um, puffy coat over it. And today it's only, what, 26 or 30 yeah. degrees. So my coat these days is my Sophie scarf. And so. <laughs> I've discovered what moms for generations knew, that a silk scarf or a cashmere or wool scarf around your neck yeah. and red lipstick is pretty much all you need. Yeah. <laughs> and this has been my coat is just putting on oh, the this. scarf. Yeah. yeah, and then Diane Keaton knows it hides all ills, and I'm learning that. I look great in the pictures when I'm wearing my Sophie. <laughs> Everybody should get a Sophie scarf. Well, I mean, this took just took one evening to make. Yeah, it was great. so fast. I, I need to make many more now right. that I'm off sweaters. They're they're great. I wanted to show you. This is one of Andra's lines. Is the Manos line, and Manos um, del Uruguay obviously is produced in Uruguay. And I thought maybe Anna could, or Andra could show you a few of the the um, offerings. How this works. How this so works. Manos yes. recently received their fair trade certification. They're very excited. They announced that this week, and I'm very excited wow. for them. It's a wonderful cooperative um, in Uruguay. So. Um, if, when Nancy has a store full of color, it seems like, oh, it's not that big of a deal to own a yarn shop. But there's a lot more that goes into just stocking shelves. And the first part is picking the colors. So in front of us right now, we have a yarn called Fino. And Fino is 100% um, wool, single ply, beautiful that many of you used in here for shawls and for scarves. So Nancy's got the beautiful skein to look at, but what happens, did you put it away? Okay. So what happens is I bring a ring like this. These are all of the colors of Fino. And this is mild. You, normally there's way more. The next one I show you has more. So we have to basically uh, pick a palette for the store. That's the kind of yarns that you, Nancy's customers like, but then also that have a, a good representation of the range. So it looks pretty on the shelf. So we today were picking colors to supplement what she has in Fino. And then we also picked more of these pre kits. They're called Fino mini kits that go with the solids to do a scarf like this. So this is Nancy's store sample of Trillium. Trilli Trillium. Trillium and this Trillium shawl, very big scarf shawl, took one Fino mini kit and then one Fino in the full skeins right. um, to get that done. Trillium. So trillium, yeah. trillium, yeah, Trillium, Trillium, yeah, Trillium, yeah. Yeah, so that's quite beautiful. So we, so today's uh, mission was what you have on the shelf already, Nancy. We had to get the colors that would that are sold out and reorder in there, and then we added a few new colors. So the other, this one was easy. The next one was actually much harder. So this is Alegria, which many of you um, know and love. That Alegria is the superwash merino with a little bit of nylon in it. 
that you can use for socks or shawls or kids or hats or accessories or even blankets. And one is the grande and one is the, the fingering. The thicker one is the worsted weight and the blue one yeah. is the fingering so weight. We have both of those. Both in the store. Yep. So in Alegria and Alegria Grande's case, this is the Alegria ring. All of these colors are the solids, poor Nancy, and then all of these colors are the multicolors. So earlier today, we had them all laid out on the table and we're uh, checking them against the inventory on the shelf and then what we need to um, reorder in here and trying to decide ahead what kinds of colors that you all are going to like. But this is great fun. This and is the most fun part of the day. It is fun. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. And Andra's very helpful because she can tell me what sells well in other stores yeah. what she thinks my customers would like yeah. what's good for what time of the year um and what goes together you would think after 30 doesn't. years i'd figure that yeah. all out yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well and you parts of think, new england yeah. are all very different um connecticut yeah. westport closer to new york city is yeah. very different than boston is very different than the burlington vermont is very different right. than portland maine or down east so it's just learning Learning the area and what works for people. Yeah. 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 It's fun. So, and you still love doing this. Yeah, I'm still this, here after all these years. She's still <laughs> always so enthusiastic and she talks me into lots of yarns and I'm always glad. I'm, I never regret no, anything well. that I've ever ordered. And the Barocco people are, are wonderful to deal with. And yes, they Andra's are. Wonderful to deal with. Thank so, you. she's very helpful. And we couldn't do this without our reps. We, um, Love having them, although during COVID it was a little harder. It was a little I harder, but we managed, yeah. And um, so I always love it when Andra comes. I block off a lot of time because we can sit here and chat and talk about yarn. And um, Robin's telling me that it's one o'clock, which is time for the store to open. Uh oh. So we'll say goodbye for now. And thank, thank you, you Andra. It was so great to have you it today. It was serendipitous and that I'm here today. Yeah, it was. Okay, ladies, Perfect. come on all in. There's lots of yarn here. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.